I've been upgrading my PC because of all the video editing I do for the YouTube channel. And as a result of that, I'm gonna document how GS Pro performance improves over time as I update the PC. And that's what you're gonna see throughout the course of this video. The first thing that I wanna say right off the bat is I always assumed based on my other videos and on using the abilities of a PC to show frame rate and loading on various components of the computer that GS Pro didn't really utilize the processor all that effectively and it was very heavily uh, GPU or video card dependent. And what I've learned since doing this is that the processor actually makes a pretty significant change. So one, I want to apologize for everyone that ever listened to me and I said an i3 is all you needed, but that was the data that the Windows software was giving me. But now I've learned that the i7 can actually add somewhere between 10 and 20 frames per second on certain courses. It's not universally true, and I'm gonna show you some flyovers to demonstrate this now. So here we have the two videos. One on the right is my upgraded RAM and CPU. Here we are on Cabot Cliffs, and we're gaining about 10 to 15 frames per second, which is pretty obvious when you look at the comparison. Now next on Whistler Nicholas North, what you're going to see is that we don't gain any frames per second, but the image on the right is noticeably smoother without any of the stutter accompanying the video on the left-hand side. So again, the processor is making a very big difference. So when looking at that Cabot Cliff flyover, you can really see the difference that my new setup had versus my original setup. So my original setup was an i3 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 6700 XT video card. Now, the video you just watched is with 48 gigs of RAM, because I added 32 gigs, and then I upgraded the processor from an i3 to an i7, but it's still the 12th generation just because it was just too much of a bargain to pass up at half the cost of the newest generation. However, the only thing that's changed is the memory and the processor. And what we saw on Cabot Cliffs was I went from around 40 to 44 frames per second on average to 55 frames per second on average. So that's a gain of say 10 to 15 frames per second, which is impressive. Now that same trend didn't hold true on Whistler Nicholas North. And I can't really explain that other than to say that maybe when the GPU is not being overworked, the processor doesn't have to kick in any help because essentially the frame rates pre and post upgrade were exactly the same. Now the next series of videos that I'm gonna share with you is of my brand new card, the AMD 7900 GRE, replacing the 6700 XT. So the 6700 XT at 4K ultra settings is 100% maxed out the entire time you're running GS Pro. And now we're gonna see just how much of a difference does it make when you go up 50, 60% in terms of the capability of the graphics card. So first up is Cabot Cliffs, a course I've always used to benchmark, and the new graphics card picked up about 35 FPS and certainly smoothed out some of the motion as you can see on the screen now. Next are two newer courses, and these are much more demanding, but I was able to pick up 40 frames per second in the first uh, hole on Druid. And finally, this is Gray Wolf, and I was able to pick up 30 frames per second here. So an average of say 35 frames per second picked up with the updated, much more powerful 7900 GRE. Man, I can't get over how much better that new AMD card performed but when I was doing my research to figure out how did I want to spend my money, what brand, what card did I want, I wanted to obviously get the biggest bang for my buck. The 7900 GRE that AMD just released in the States is selling at a MSRP of $550. 
Now that's a good bargain, but only if it works as well as this one is showing that it does. The main thing that I learned as I was going through this research is that the graphics engine of GS Pro does not use ray tracing. And ray tracing is the AMD video card's biggest deficiency. However, AMD has a clear advantage when it comes to something called rasterization. They can do that kind of processing much more effectively than the NVIDIA cards can, but the NVIDIAs are so much better at ray tracing, it's not even funny. So if you're playing video games or what have you that have a lot of ray tracing, NVIDIA is absolutely the way to go. But in the case of GS Pro, again, this is for video editing and for my ability to shoot video using GS Pro, GS Pro, since it doesn't use ray tracing, then that advantage of the NVIDIA card is gone. And I went for the 7900 GRE just because it was so much stronger than my current card. But at the same time, at that $550 mark, it's actually a pretty good bargain when you look at dollars per frame per second. I just wanted to put together this video to try to help clarify what you might be able to expect if you upgrade a PC or if you're looking at buying a PC and you wanna know what kind of specs will work the best. I'm gonna revise what I recommend from this point forward and I'm gonna tell everyone that asks me, you want a minimum of an i7 or the AMD equivalent. And when it comes to video cards, I think you really just wanna get the absolute strongest video card that you can afford. Now, whatever that dollar value is, try to get the best bang for your buck. And if you're doing an upgrade, don't forget about the used market, say like eBay or something like that. These graphics cards are built very well and you know you should be able to rely on a used product. Well, that's it from the Golf Nerd. Hit them long and straight, and I'll see you next time.